The Agile Process Map, with its process diagrams, is a great tool if you want to understand how Agile works. But of course, what you get with our product is not static content. In fact, we provide a set of process templates in a number of popular formats, such as Vestio and Ares, that you can adapt to the needs of your organization. Which is perfectly allowed, because ITIL, after all, is not a standard, but a set of recommendations. And nobody expects you to implement the official ITIL processes to the letter. So today I'm going to show you a few examples of how you can go about changing and editing our process diagrams in Visio. My first message here is that you can do to these diagrams whatever is possible in Visio. There are no locks whatsoever in these diagrams. You can add any type of shape that is available. But we provide a number of features that will help you with keeping a consistent look and feel of the diagrams. First, there is a collection of master shapes. You can see them down here in my document stencil. These are the shapes we used ourselves when creating the original diagrams. But now you can also use them if you need to add, say, an additional activity. In that case, you can drag an activity shape from the document stencil onto the diagram. Then adjust the sequence flow a bit. We also need an additional sequence flow here. And then you can enter some description into the new task shape. You can of course also change the text in existing tasks, or notes below the tasks, or indeed delete what you don't need. There are no limits whatsoever. The nice thing about using master shapes is that they maintain a link between the shapes created based on the master shape and the master shape itself. That's a big advantage if, for example, you want to change the looks of particular shapes. And I'll show you quickly how this works. We open the master shape with a double click and, for demonstration purposes, let's now change the background color of the shape to something that makes a difference. Then we close the master and, as you can see, this changes the background color of all the task shapes. So, with the master shapes, you can change the format of a number of shapes in one single place. There's no need to adapt every shape individually. This was simple enough because the shapes down here typically occur only once in the whole process model. And that's why it's no problem to edit the descriptions directly within the shapes. Things are a bit different up here where we have processes and data objects. As you may have seen in my earlier videos, a process shape has a link to a process diagram. And it also has some descriptive information in the shape data fields, such as the process name, a brief description of the process, a reference number, the superior process, a unique identifier, and a status value. Status values can be handy if you introduce ITIL step by step. If, say, a process is not yet active but in the planning stage, you can enter in planning here. And as you can see, this makes the shape turn gray. So, by entering anything different than active in the status field, you can gray out a process. And if you change this to active again, the shape will turn green again. Now, as you can imagine, a process like this one is used in many diagrams. And whenever it's used, it needs to have the correct link and the correct descriptive information. Obviously, adding hyperlinks and descriptions manually every time we use the process would be a lot of work. So, a lot speaks for having a central repository somewhere where we manage the processes with all their attributes. Such a repository comes with the ITIL process map, and also kind of a visual macro that we can use for picking objects from the repository and inserting them into the visual diagrams. If you install our add-in, you will get a couple of new commands up here in the add-ins tab. And now, with the repository and the add-in, you can do the following. You can create a fresh process shape, like this. This is still a blank process shape. There's no link yet, therefore we cannot see a plus sign. And it has no useful information in the shape data fields. And now we click on the select command up here in the add-ins tab to get a list of all the processes from the repository. We can enter a search pattern to narrow down the list a bit, and then select a process from the list. This will set the process name, the link to the process diagram, and also the descriptive information in the shape data fields. How do we do this? Probably you guess already that we pick the processes from some kind of small database. 
In fact, our object repository is not a database, but an Excel file with a couple of simple tables. Here, for example, we have the process table. In this table, every process is defined in one row, and every row starts with a unique ID. Then we have a couple of cells with the process properties, such as the reference number, the process name, its description, the next higher level process, and the status value. Obviously, these properties are the same ones that we've seen before in Visio in the shape data fields. And here in the last three cells, we also define the link for the process, pointing to the correct process diagram. Down here at the bottom, you can see that we have several tables in this Excel workbook, one for processes and other ones for the data objects and the roles used in the ITIL process map. So we can use the same mechanism to easily insert data objects into the Visio diagrams. First, we create a new data object shape and then click on Select to bring up a list of the data objects defined in the repository. Again, we can select one from the list and that will set the name of the object, the link to the checklist and the descriptive information. Now we also add an association like this and another one. And in fact, we have now defined a new output from this process. To change the responsibilities in the process, we can, for instance, create some space at the bottom of the page, insert an additional swim lane on top of the existing one, add a new role shape to the swim lane, pick a role from the repository as needed, and then drag an activity or two into the new swim lane. And we also need to adjust the sequence flows a bit, so the diagram looks perfect again. Now, before we finish, I'd also like to point out that you can, of course, change the repository, just as you can change the Visio diagrams. For example, you can go down to the end of the process table and insert an additional row, which amounts to adding a new process to the repository. You would start by entering a new unique ID. Then you put in the reference number, a process name and a description. We don't have to fill in every field, but in the status field we say that the process is in planning. And if we don't have a diagram yet for the new process, we leave the link fields empty. Now we save the repository and close it and go back to Visio. And here, back in Visio, instead of creating a new process shape, we select an existing one, bring up the list of processes and search for the new process. Here it is, and by clicking on OK, we switch this process over to the new one we've just created in the repository. As you can see, the process shape is shown in grey, because we set the status to in planning. And also, there is no plus sign in the process shape, because we didn't enter any link information. So, we have a simple mechanism here for managing objects in the repository, and inserting those objects easily into the Visio diagrams. Of course, we also need a way of updating the shapes if changes were made to the repository. To show you how this can be done, we first do some small change in the repository, such as giving a few sub-processes of incident management and new status of in planning. Once the repository is saved, you can select a couple of shapes in the diagram and then use the refresh command. This will update the selected shapes with current information from the repository and the incident management processes are now shown in grey because of the new in-planning status, as expected. There's a second option to update the diagrams if there were many changes in the repository. If you click on Refresh File, this will update all the shapes in the currently open Visio file in one go. For these examples, I wanted to demonstrate that the ITIL process map is completely flexible when it comes to adapting it to the needs of your organization. This applies to the Visio version of our ITIL model, but also to all other platforms, such as iGraphics and ARIS. I'm afraid we cannot cover all the details here, because that would take too long. But then, our process model contains a user manual with further information. And you can also get in touch with us if you need any help.